QAC TV. Thank you for watching Papa's World. Each week we have a different author come in and he or she will talk about their books and we do a little bit of uh, their background and their lifestyle and find out how in the world they got interested in writing and uh, you know what might be on their future agenda for writing. I'm delighted to have with Lorian Oberlin with this week. Lorian, thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. At least my directions got you here. We have some authors I still did. lost. We'll never see it. Okay? I found it. Lorraine, we always start the show with just a little bit of background and that type of stuff. Now, you're a Pennsylvania lady. I am. I was born and raised in Pittsburgh, okay. um, western part of the, the city um, or, or suburbs, and then lived in the Monroeville area for a number of years and went to college at Westminster College, which is between Pittsburgh well, and Erie. Let me back you up just a little bit. Uh, high school, were you a theater school, person? High school, what? I... Well, everybody in my family had to do band. Uh -oh. Here's the funny story. So, you're all so musicians. band okay. and journalism met oh, the same period of the day. <laughs> so one had Therein to go. was a dilemma. Okay. And so it wasn't until my senior year that journalism met six period and band was you seven. Got to them. So I got to do it. But as friends have said in my later years, I guess with these books and these are only a few of them, it didn't really hold me back. Okay. So now tell me, anyway. the, the music thing, mom and dad musicians? No, no, it was just, you know, it was one of those things music. where, yeah, I was in the Wait, marching What instrument band. did you play? I played flute. Good for you, okay. Yeah. And this was all through high school? This was all flute? through high school, yeah. Okay. Just, now, now, you know, but I'm not, um, trust me, I'm not the, no, so I'm much no better Herbie, writer than a musician. Not a Herbie man or anything, okay. No. Uh, brothers and sisters? Um, sisters, and uh, so I come from a family of sisters, but then now I've got two sons. So okay. that was. So it's worked out both ways. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I interrupt you. Tell me about college. So you graduated from so high school. So I you're a graduated band from high school, went to college um, in a small Amish town mm -hmm. in western Pennsylvania, okay. New Wilmington, PA, which right. is Westminster College, is home there. It's kind of the town. Okay. Um, <laughs> And so I worked for a number of years, just... Um, Continue I, I, with music, or what was no, it? No, 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 no music. Um, so, yeah, got into the writing. That's what okay. I so really... So college is when you got into it a bit, okay. Yes, really wanted School, it to go... School, newspaper, literary magazine, or just you writing in the dorm, or what? Uh, no, I, I was a broadcasting major, actually. Okay, you told me that a, before a we went a broadcasting on, yeah. major, and worked in the public relations department. Of the college, man. At the college. And worked on the campus newspaper. And I did a television internship at KDKA in Pittsburgh. Mm, yes, okay. So that, that was all good. But when I graduated from Westminster College, it was 83. And if you can think back, I guess I'm dating myself. Okay. Wasn't a good economy. No. You know, recessionary times. So I took whatever job I could get that would give me a little bit of um, writing and here, experience. And here you have a communications major, right? No, yeah, good kind of, right, yeah. Right, I, I supported it with just broad you know, communications sure. background there. Um, and so I did some volunteer work for the American Red Cross. Mm -hmm. I worked this for, is in Pittsburgh, you're yes, staying in Pittsburgh? Yes, all in, all all in Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh. Um, did some administrative type work and then had my children and one of my goals was to just get published, okay? okay. And so get anything published. Get anything, get anything published. published. And at the time, it was more articles. So okay. I started out writing as a freelancer, contributing to newspapers, contributing to this magazines. This is why you're home with your mom and you're yeah. being a mom. Yeah. And you, okay, sure. Okay. Right. So my very first book, which is long out of print, but it was in the 90s. It was a book through Writer's Digest called Writing for Money. Okay. I took that in later years to a book called Writing for Quick Cash. And, which the, and these are tips for people who want to get published. All and different write, ways going through of what you went how okay. to make money as a writer. Okay. And I'll probably redo that at some point okay. because both of those books are out how of print. Do? How did you do? They, 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 they did great because, okay. you know, in a... People like to work from home. So you had the best of both worlds. You had them. You were mom, and your and your, I think your so. idea of getting published was working so. pretty well. Yeah. So then, you know, that led to a couple of books, um, and then through my writing. What type of books? Well, 
this nonfiction, oh, 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 nonfiction. nonfiction. Okay. So through my writing, I met um, Dr. Tim Murphy, okay. and he had the idea for this book, The Angry, Angry Child. Child. Okay. And he was a practicing psychologist, and he was also getting into politics. So at the time, he was going into the um, Pennsylvania State Senate. All right. And I was divorced at that point, wanting to stay at home as long as possible to work with my the children. Kids are, the kids are still growing They're, still, they're growing, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, we got together at one point, and we're talking about this book, and I said, you know, if you need a co-author, let's talk. Well, that was history, I guess, yeah. because we did... Um, we got this published shortly after Columbine occurred. Right, okay. Now, this isn't a book about Columbine What's it type about? What's kids. What's The Angry Child about? The Angry Child is essentially a good parenting book. Okay. And it's how to handle the moods and um, behaviors of your child from, I would say, toddler years through the teen so years. It's not about adolescence. No, the whole, no. Little toddler gamut. through teen. Okay. And... Um, you know, people can do the read inside, you know, online, and but it but it is a, a just a good. And it's still good book. it's still available. It is available through Random through, House. Oh, yes, through Random House. Can you get mm -hmm. it through? Just you can through, get it okay. through Amazon. Yeah. Okay. And so um, I I think the news center has a copy, but um, you know, I I try to keep the local stores. Um, so it's still available. Yeah, it's, it's tell, still it's still in print. Tell me about Tim Murphy and. Tim Murphy is now a U.S. Congressman. congressman. He is from represents a uh, district in Pennsylvania. And he is working on a landmark um, mental health bill. So if, if anybody can try to fix some of the problems that we have with mental health care, I feel like he's in Are you still in touch with him it. and communicate with uh, him? Yeah. Okay. We are, uh, we wrote a second book. Okay. I don't want to hide any That's of these. Right. Yeah. The second book that we wrote is called Overcoming Passive Aggression. It came out in 2005. And the subtitle here talks about hidden anger and how you want to prevent it from spoiling your relationships, your career, and your happiness. So I wrote this book when I um, went to graduate school. So okay. I'm kind of jumping Where'd around on my you go to grad school? jumping around on my bio, okay. but at some point then um, I moved to Maryland okay. and was living in Montgomery County. And so right down the road from where we were living was Johns Hopkins University. Satellite campus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Satellite campus. And decided that it was a good point in my life, especially after 9-11. It, it did a lot of, uh, let's say, damage to the writing world because you know, people weren't buying magazines. They weren't sure. traveling. All these things have impact on, on the writing world. But it was a good time in my life to explore some other interests, and I had always been interested in psychology. So I decided, since I had written, at that point, three different books, and this one was you know, Surviving Separation, Separation and divorce. divorce. And this is from a personal experience. Personal okay. experience, but well-researched. Okay. It's not It's not the Laurie Ann story. this was co-authored, or is this what you did by nope. yourself? Nope, this, this was solo. And, and still in print. Published. Still, still in print. Still in print. And all still of these, we keep reminding the mm -hmm. audience, they can get it. And all of these books, I would say the, these three books have Facebook pages, too. And okay. in, in our era, era of being so digitally connected, um, I try to put interesting material up there from time to time. Not just here's my book, but um, just to share and help. It, it's it's articles that you know things that uh, might come out of the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post or links and, and things like that. In the outlook like section on Sunday, it might be that type well, of. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, if, if if it deals with the topic, I I find it relevant. I try to but load I'm, it up onto the Facebook Maria, page. Let me ask you something. How, what, how do you co-author a book? I mean, I. It sounds silly. Very but that's why I'm wondering. Very hey, if you're by yourself, it's you and a computer and a word processor. It's my yeah. input. How do you go ahead? Very oh. interesting question, Fred. Yeah. Um, I I would say this. People might think that co-authoring a book is easier. I heard two it's gentlemen harder. a couple weeks ago say we're constantly sending mm -hmm. emails. Yes. It is much harder actually, okay. right. because it, it, though it's great to have other opinions and bounce things off. It's very complicated, and when you're working with somebody who's in the Congress, it can <laughs> They're be busy. More, They're busy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, you and know, do you it, each do a chapter? Or you agree to? I mean, how do you divide a, a well, book up like this? You're looking at who drafts it, okay. basically. <laughs> um, you're looking at her. Right. And and having said that, I will say that the Angry Child 
um, was largely based on the private practice that Dr. Murphy had for okay. many years. Right. Um, he now continues in the role of a psychologist, but at Bethesda Even while he's Naval. In Congress. Even well, while he's, he's in part of the Naval Reserves, okay. and so, so he's I, to his military exactly. obligation. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So, but I have a practice now, and it is um, based in Easton. So I am a licensed clinical professional counselor. Okay. I take insurance. Um, I see children, um, teens, couples, families, and um, you know it's a it's a rewarding field. So I've, I I look at my life now, and it's kind of the best of both worlds. Okay. I I um, started a as a practice. writer. Yeah. I was always interested in health in general, and then mental health and psychology and specifically and so it started the private practice out in the Gaithersburg area I still have an office there I have one a, day a week one day a week and then I'm more more available here in Easton um, so that's my primary role in life right now is, is as a therapist as a and therapist. licensed counselor um, but how then, did you yeah I was gonna say yeah, you're, so, how in the world that's we're gonna be like a uh, card shark here we're gonna put we're gonna <laughs> put the blackjack away and all of a sudden, you become somebody else. Go well, here's, here's the thing. After so many years of writing serious nonfiction, I mean, would you agree? Anger, oh, I, I passive mean, look aggression, at these titles, yes. separation, and divorce. Yes, this, is pretty not, serious, this is pretty heavy stuff. Heavy stuff. So, at the end of the day, I know when I read, I like to just escape. Escape. And, yeah. and just be told a story and have a little spice to it and, and just, you know, just lose myself in sure. somebody else's world. So when my family and I moved out here several years ago, um, we'd been coming to the shore part-time and fell in love with it, decided to relocate. When you say coming to the shore, Queen Anne's County well, or it was, Ocean City? It, or? Actually, it was more mid-shore. It was mid -shore, more the okay. Cambridge okay. area. And um, But when we decided to look for a home and, you know, we wanted to be a little bit closer to Community. the bridge. Yeah, Community. yeah. So um, one of the first things I did was I joined a neighborhood book club, and I'm really glad that I did that. Number one, it was a great way to get to know people. Met so some the, Eastern Shore folks. Yeah, the the therapist in me said, "Look, you, you got to get to know people, and you know, start get to Eastern get a Shore support system." And, there, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm so glad that I did that. Okay. Um, great group of women, and and so it got me reading. And another thing that was really inspiring was that I went to the Bay to Ocean Writers Conference. And then no, tell us about that. It's okay, a big, so yeah. Bay to Ocean Writers Conference is sponsored by um, a division of the Eastern Shore Writers Association. So if you are a writer, you would want to check out Eastern Shore Writers, or ESWA for short. And annually, they have this Bay to Ocean Conference. Well, I went there and I saw some other people who were self-publishing. And mind you, in my days of teaching people how to write um, with the right other writing books, self-publishing had a, a bad a negative thing. Yeah, it had a, had a negative connotation to it. It's very different now because we have uh, very different te technology. Most of the authors, Lorraine, we've interviewed in the, over the last six months, That's they're all self-publishing right. for monetary reasons as, as well as control reasons. Well, so right. Continue. And so all of my books prior to this had been through traditional New York okay. or other These publishers. These non-fiction books with right. the congressman. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and my own books. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, I'd written nine non-fiction books, mm -hmm. those three in included. But Okay, so I decided that for my own relaxation and my own creative outlet, it had been a few years since I had created anything of great sure. length, and I decided to write a novel. So therein was I had this serious persona of being the therapist. I just came. I, I mean, again, because I did, different authors. That, I've had a person who's telling me they were driving back from Nebraska, and all of a sudden there's this flash, and I'm going to write a piece of fiction. I've had other authors said, I researched, I researched, then did some fiction. It was a snap, all of a sudden I'm going to do it, or? I mean, had, had it, no, no, no. no. It wasn't a snap decision. It was, I would say the inspiration came from those two two sources, you know, the reading and, and going to the conference the and seeing other people do sure. it. Okay. But I had started this novel. Yeah, this is letting go. Yes, I had started this back in the 90s. 
but I didn't have the confidence to, to finish it. You saw yourself as a, as a non-fiction I person. I saw it, then, yeah, and, and I, that's what paid. Okay, that, that's sure. what paid. Sure. So what I did was um, I dusted off that manuscript, or well, dusted it off. I mean, actually, I'd thrown you out the manuscript. It. Oh, yeah. But I could, <laughs> yeah, I, well, I had a backup. I had okay. a backup, a digital backup. So I pulled that out. I loaded it onto, you know, an e-reader yeah, device, sure. and, and part of me cringed, and part of me thought, wow, you know, there's, there's something yeah, in here. Yeah. So I totally reworked the manuscript. I gave it a Maryland Shores theme, okay. and so it is a Chesapeake set love story. Now, before and, we, let me fair, before you get into that, I'm going to let you talk as long as, but explain to everybody... Uh, it the pen name. Yeah, it doesn't okay. say uh, Lauren Oblin. It says no. Lauren Monroe. So that's so. yeah. In, in Tell me about Lauren Monroe. A roundabout way, because of the serious work of the nonfiction, I thought, well, I wonder if I should do a pen name. So I polled, I would say, two to three dozen writers and psychology mm -hmm. colleagues. Mm -hmm. And the prevailing uh, thought was, yeah, go with the pen name. Okay. And that's where I was leaning to. So it's not a secret. It's if you who's look Lauren me up. Who's and who's Monroe? <laughs> well, if you look me up on, on Wikipedia under Lorianne Oberlin, it will mention the, the Lauren Monroe as a pen name. The Lauren came because I always liked that name. Okay. And when I originally wrote the manuscript, the character's name was who's Lauren. Lauren? Okay. And then when I decided to redo this all and and um, come up with a pen name, I thought, darn, you know, I really like Lauren. So I kind of took that. And because I made this all very nautical, and uh, I found what I think was the perfect name for my heroine. And I'm not going to give that away. No, okay. um, because it's just, it's explained. It's in part of the, the story. It's part, it, of, the it's part story. of the story. But the Monroe is short for Monroeville, okay. which is in western Remind Pennsylvania. Everybody, that's, that's home. And, and it's where I lived and moved from. I, I lived there, I want to say, like 10, 12 years before I uh, moved to Maryland. Okay. So it's short for it's Monroeville. Okay. Yeah, it's a home reference. Now, I interrupt you. Go ahead and tell us about the story. So, well, it's an evolving story. Um, the series name is The Maryland Shores first book being Letting Go, and this is set mostly on the western shore, I would say, and there's a reason for that, because the book starts out in the post 9-11 era of, um, you know, after the terrorist and, and attacks. You say western shore, Bethesda? Well, there's a, couple, there's a couple of scenes that are in the Montgomery County area. Okay. But predominantly in the, I would say, the West River area, okay. south of Annapolis. Okay, Anne Arundel County. It's yeah. Close, so close. I, I made up everything, as most novelists do. Um, and so there's this kind of mythical town. Town doesn't even really have a name, but, okay. you know, there's a hospital and things like On that. On the water. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of Chesapeake set. Okay. Yeah, okay. Close, to, close to the water. So it's set in the year 2002 which is post 9-11. Right, it's hard to imagine back then, but it was a very tense time. Oh, it was confusing. People were scared to fly. People were scared to go overseas. It right. Was, uh, it, it was and it was scary. a particularly tense time in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. In fall. Security reasons. That's when the people were shooting people. Right? Yes. The sniper yes. era. Yes. yes. People were afraid to jog, looking for white vans or whatever it was. Yes. It was terrible time. So, because my heroine struggles with anxiety, um, I needed a backdrop. And I just felt that that time frame added that anxiety-ridden tension. So it's not a huge part of the story by any means, but it's, it's so just, it's the I had to choose where to set it yeah. and when to, to start the story. So it's contemporary enough but interestingly enough, going back and writing a book about the years of 2002, 2003, 4, it's funny because we're so much time. more connected through technology now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a scarier time. But I'm just thinking from the, the you know, we're talking a little over 10 years. And, you know, not everybody was as connected. I mean, we didn't have iPhones. We didn't have iPads. Yeah. Um, with blackberries, that was the the, that was the big biggest. Fad. That, that was, was the fad. fad. That was the fad. But a lot of people have things like a Nokia phone. And, sure. um, so getting all those details straight is, is interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So then I am continuing the series and my second book is coming out in May. And mind you, this is all in the genre that I would consider women's okay. fiction. So if you've got a mom, a wife, a girlfriend, uh, an aunt, um, these are good books. I would say they're more for the, the woman in her maybe mid-30s through 80s. Children in these books? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this it's, is it's mothers a, it's, raising children and careers and playing yeah. a million and it's, roles. And I'll be that. honest, I mean, yeah. it's it's got some steam in terms mm -hmm. of the romance, but it's, okay. it's no Fifty Shades of the Shores, that's that's for sure. <laughs> steam is good Did, in moderation. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know, well, here's the thing. My readers tell me, they say, Lorian, you leave you leave a good bit up to the reader's imagination. Good. And I think that that's good. As Hemingway that's good. did, a lot of great authors yeah. did. Right? But, yeah. but yeah, you know, most women, when they relax with a book, they do want to be taken away sure. with a story. Sure. And so you mix in some cute kids, handsome guys, a little bit of romance. And in book two, we've even got pets. Oh, so, Lord, you've got you know, it all. If you have pickup trucks and baseball, you've got it made. I don't right? know about the pickup trucks. <laughs> okay. and, uh, baseball, You're not that no, much of the show. We don't have baseball, but okay. you know what we do Third have, book, Fred? Yeah. Good have. We've got football. Oh, good. Redskins Let me tell Ravens. you. Where do we got? Let me tell you. Okay. Where am I from again? DC, oh, you're a Pittsburgh Steeler mm -hmm. fan. Gotta be. Okay. So, when I, mind you, I started this book in the 90s. Okay. So there's a part of me that when I moved the setting from Western PA to Maryland. You brought the Steelers with you. Uh, Terry Bradshaw yeah. and the boys are here. Is that what you're telling me? Okay. Uh, kind. Well, more like Coach Cower, and okay. uh, it was okay. pre Ben, so okay. I don't know. We're, we're, and we're the quarterback. Was yeah. Uh, I but the Steelers, the Steelers. I wrote it. The I Steelers should remember. were still the most important team. The Rooney family. Well, but the most here's here's people. the thing. I know where I live, okay. so I live in Maryland. And so I will have to say... So you have the Redskins say, beating the Steelers or something? No, yeah. there's, there's some Redskin yeah. fans in here. Great. There's Ravens fans in here. Good, okay. And there's Steelers fans. So you've got okay? the best of all worlds. So I have the best of all worlds, but I have had such fun um, exploring that whole Steelers-Ravens rivalry because it really is a oh, rivalry. It's fantastic. It's the biggest and rivalry I think the Ravens have. I've been. learned so many neat things from my friends who are Ravens fans. Um, before I started this, I didn't know that much. I mean, I guess, you know, maybe I'd heard it in yeah, the 90s. Little football. But, but as my sons would tell you, I'm, I'm kind of a fair weather fan. Yeah, yeah. But I learned all about the Colts and being stolen in the middle okay. of the night. That, and drama, that whole drama. Exactly. And so I've incorporated some of that. Okay. And I, I think it's great. So, guys, you can read this stuff. It's what you're telling us, right? Yeah. yeah I don't think bit. the guys are going to go uh, for okay. it. Okay. But women who are football fans, it's I it. really do think that they'll enjoy right. it. I hey, really you, do. you mentioned the Steelers and the Redskins are raving in there. Let me just ask you very quickly how much of you is in there or not? Um, I think there I mean, are. No, they giving stuff away. Are some of the characters, are you in the book in some combination? Or s I, th I think the experiences of being a mom, being a single mom for a few years, definitely helped me to write these characters. Okay. Um, in book two, my hero, well, in book one, the heroine is actually a graphic designer. Now, I cannot draw a okay. line so that's with not a you. ruler. That's, not, that's not me. That's not but she does have sort of that interest with public relations and marketing okay. and things like that. So, a little so bit of maybe your a little bit of that. A little bit of your background. You know, you Any write, clinical you write psychologist what you know. or child? Oh, okay. Uh, there, there's a social worker in, in the okay. in the second book. So there's a little bit of so, Lorianne. Exactly, but you know, I I write it about people's lives, so it's not as much about their work, though their work helps to shape their character, but it's their lives oh, their and how lives. they interact okay. and. Given what I do for a living and that I know human behavior and I've researched some of these books on anger and divorce and things, I do think it's it's um, it, very rewarding when people say to me that they feel like the characters resonate. Okay, they're real. That the they're characters real. are real. Okay, okay. Because if I can't write a real character, then I, I figure I should go back to the <laughs> Maybe psychology now. Okay. Now, Lorianne, look, yeah. time goes by so quick here. Let's do what I promised we'd do. Let's reverse the wheels a little bit. If we're interested in getting the books, okay? It sounds like to me a great summer read. Mom's it's a summer read. Going, going to the Ocean City. These are the type of books and you want. And book two oh, okay. ends up in Ocean City. Oh, it ends up in Ocean City. It'd be this, perfect. This picture 
was, well, the first book, I took this picture um, south of Annapolis. So this is the West River okay. area. For real. Okay. And this is for real, um, the uh, Ocean City. Okay, very good. Yeah. So My husband actually took that oh, picture. Okay, I have to give him credit Yes, he that. did well. Who were the models? Well, the models, Tell me I, had, kids. I, oh, no, okay. I, I had a cover designer do, okay. the, do the rest of the work. Well, let's do this. If, I mean, uh, Mother's Day, post-Mother's Day, Mother's Day, Summer perfect reading. Stuff. Yeah, perfect yeah. stuff to pack for a week at the beach because it has mm -hmm. a little ocean city, has some stuff. To get these books again, remind them how to get them. People can go to Amazon, okay. um, and they uh, th this is in paperback and as a Kindle read. Just type in the title, right. no problem. Right. We don't normally order. This book is currently on Kindle pre-order because okay. it launches in middle of May, and it will be, obviously, it is in paperback. I have a book signing coming up in Easton okay. on when, 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 Saturday, yeah. May 23rd, okay. um, which is the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. So the stores, though, I've gotten great support from some local merchants. I will say that you can get um, book one and then book two will be in the New Center in Easton, Coastal Cottage Gift Shop in Graysonville, and Chesapeake Trading. Um, in Chesapeake Trading Company in St. Michael's. So they're available. They are they're available. Easily available. Yes. Okay, which and and the store uh, Mystery Loves Company carries a copy or two um, as well in Oxford. Okay. But the but predominantly the new center has been a tremendous support to me. Great. So I love to promote them. I love to shop there myself. Um, so again, the book signers, do the Saturday, book Saturday, again. Saturday, May twenty third. Where is that again? Which is Saturday of Memorial Day, Day weekend, weekend. Okay. eleven a.m. to two p.m at the news center in Easton. Okay, great, okay. Now, for the support items, websites, emails, yes, all that good stuff, I, what do we get? I have developed a website. Um, it has this image that I've taken from the bookmark. Okay, that's in titles. Um, and the website for my novels is Lauren Monroe This is the hardest novels. part of the program. <laughs> Dot com. Okay, say that so a couple times. It's Lauren Monroe Novels. Okay. Dot com. Com. okay. So they, now on those websites, a chance to read a little bit of the books? Um, no, you know, there isn't an expert excerpt, okay. but when you go to Amazon, there's always the look you can inside. Look inside feature. Page. Okay. And I'm working with um, on social media, I am on Twitter, okay. I'm on Pinterest. I am on Goodreads, where yes, we're working on a um, a, a sample because they take that from right. Amazon actually, and on Facebook. So all types of ways to get you: Facebook, yes. websites, all types of. Good if you stuff. type in Lauren Monroe novels or novelist, you will yeah, find up. those on the yeah. social media, okay. either into into Twitter, um, Facebook page. Pinterest, etc. Great. Now, in case all of a sudden the first part of the show and said, hey, look, I'd like to know more about children and having problems with brain. I have a professional website okay. um, for my private practice. It is laurianoberlin.com, and that would have my bio there. We'll have um, information about insurance plans and employee assistance programs that I take. Um, as I said, I have two office locations. One is in Easton. One is in Montgomery County, where I am one day a week. Um, but I, I love both of my jobs. It sure. is kind of the best of both worlds. And now it sounds, it looks like to me you're leaning towards the fiction world a little bit at this point. In your well, life. It, it, yes and no, because Dr. Murphy and I are actually talking Another about, and, and yeah, Good for you. exactly. Good so, for you. so it might, might be a year in which I do something that is, you know, self-publishing, continuing the series and, and then also, um, something through traditional publishing, right. but, um. It, it is a nice balance, and um, I'm actually taking some of the advice that I give my clients, and that is hang around with like-minded people, find your outlet, and take time for yourself. Sure. And, it, and you I know, think you've done well. I mean, you, you, you got the best practice, of both worlds. You've got to practice what you preach, preach, and you've right. got to walk the talk. Well, Lorraine, thank you for finding us thank here on you. Center. We really appreciate it. Now, we'll get you back. Next time you have another book coming out, I don't care if it's uh, nonfiction or fiction, we'll get you back, all right? I appreciate and, it. And uh, maybe we'll get the good congressman to come down to you guys, because I still want to know how two people well, write a I book. <laughs> I, I don't know. If you can get into his schedule, right. let me know, because it's, it's a tough one. Thank you again. I appreciate it. I'm Fred McNeil. You've been watching Papa's World. We've had a wonderful time with Lori Ann Oberlin. Now remember, she has fiction books, some terrific summer reads, 
and uh, the young women and women in the audience, right? These are... Uh, I would say 30s to 80s. Okay. Yeah. Aim towards you a little bit. And yes, guys, there's some NFL football, okay? And again, for those of you who are raising children or want to get some information from a practicing psychologist, you have both of us. So again, thanks for being with us. I'm Fred McNeil. My time's up. Thank you for your time, and we're going to see you next time. Thank you.